I'm Taylor Langston. It took 1,200 miles, 26 hours, and all four quarters for the ACU Wildcats to come home from Mississippi with a thrilling third win of the season. And I'm Grant Boone. No bus rides this week, but the Cats will go Greyhound tonight as they welcome in Eastern New Mexico. Highlights from last week's game and a preview of the Cats and Dogs right now on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome to week six of the Ken Collins Show with the coach Ken Collins and with ACU senior Taylor Langston. I'm Grant Boone. The Wildcats last Thursday night dived into the deep south and beat Delta State 34-28 to keep their season from heading south. The Wildcats now 3-2. and two. Coach, this is four consecutive nail biters. How's the blood pressure? Well, uh, considering I probably fought off uh, two heart attacks there in the second half I, it, it was good it was a it was a good game if you're a fan you gotta love it and uh i'm sure everybody was fired up and uh you know biting their nails i uh, almost nubbed down a couple of my fingernails but uh, it's part of it at the end of the game i'm numb i'm like hey let's just make a play get on the bus get some pizza and go home yeah well, we've talked and talked and talked about all of the obstacles that you had to overcome in this game not only two away games but one a 14-hour bus drive all the way out to delta state Playing a good team. I mean, how did how did that win feel, um, knowing that you overcame all those obstacles and faced that much adversity? Well, I I told our guys, you know, at, coming off the Angelo game, when everybody's disappointed, uh, I told our guys, at this point, we are being squeezed. We, the pressure's on. We're being squeezed as a as a as an organization as a whole. We're being squeezed. We're going to see what's what's going to come out because when you're squeezed, you can't fake it. You can't talk about it. It's hey, this is this is who it is, and we found out exactly who we were in Cleveland, Mississippi on a short week playing an option team, a really good uh, defense, very athletic defense, and we made enough plays to win. So what came out when we were squeezed was guys, guys that were tough. We're still trying to figure out how smart we are at times, but our guys are tough, they're resilient, and that told me what I needed to know for the rest of the season. I think we're sitting pretty. Big win, 34-28. We'll have a look at the highlights when we come back. It's the Ken Collins Show. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Ken Collum Show. It wasn't easy beating Green. ACU stuffed the fighting okra of Delta State last Thursday night in Cleveland, Mississippi. With a look at the highlights, here's Taylor. After winning the coin toss, the Wildcats deferred to the second half, but the Delta State possession didn't last long thanks to safety Mike Wallace. Char Kendrick West takes advantage of it and puts the Cats on the board quick. Next offensive play, the Statesmen turn the ball over again. It's recovered by Justin Stewart and Austin Gwynn on the sideline was right there in the middle of the celebration. The Cats not getting six up, but a Morgan Line Berry field goal is good for a 10-point lead in the first half. The Statesmen recover with a long pass downfield to close the ACU lead to only three. The back and forth game continued and ACU finds themselves with a three point lead drawing near the half. A long statesman run puts ACU in the corner for the first time of the game. Another linebacker goes down, Justin Stevens grabbing his hamstring, an injury that will put him out for at least a few weeks. Trevor Wooden tries again for a pass over Mike Wallace, but it's not high enough, and Wallace picks off his second pass of the night. The Cats use that good karma to move down the field and with a pass to Elton Cochran and again to Taylor Gabriel, a final handoff to Char Kendrick West and the Cats are back on top. After a long halftime return by LeVon Downs, the Statesman not doing enough to keep the Cats offense off their back. 
Mitchell Gale takes over again and puts Lineberry close enough to kick in another field goal. The Statesmen respond quickly, however. With six more points, they find their second lead of the game. The lead won't last long. Mitchell Gale chunks it up for Taylor Gabriel to show off a little bit, and he comes down with a 28-yard catch and a final touchdown to close the door on this first dance game between Delta State and ACU. <laughs> So a big win for the Wildcats, 34-28 to improve to 3-2 and two on the season. Coach, let's talk about this game. Six lead changes, a couple of goal line stands, one to end each half. Two programs with rich football histories. They won a national title a dozen years ago. They've been to the playoffs nearly every year. To me, and, you know, and I know Lance felt this way up in the booth, it felt like an emotional game. What, what did it feel like down there in the stand? On uh, the it, it sure was. I mean, when... When you go into a tradition-rich program, you can expect a dogfight. I mean, it, we knew, I didn't expect any, either team to run away with the game. If they got up, we were coming back because we're fighters, and, and, or we were about to find that out because mm -hmm. we, were, we were getting squeezed. But uh, if we got up, I knew it wasn't over. And, and you just you got to keep your team focused and keep, uh, keep progressing, keep just doing what you're supposed to do offensively and defensively and uh, hopefully you're making enough plays to win the game, and that's what we did. We made just enough plays to win that game. And the game could scarcely have started any better for your team. You kicked the ball off after winning the toss. You deferred the decision to the second half, and on their first possession after they get, I think, one first down, Mike Wallace comes up with the first of two right. interceptions in the game, his second straight week with two interceptions, and then you get a turnover in the t inside their own tight red at, the, at right. their own five-yard line. You leave there, though, up only 10 nothing after those two takeaways early. And it almost felt a little bit like the week before against Angelo State to us. What did it feel like down there? Oh, sure. But the, 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 the difference is our second series, when they turned the ball over on kickoff return, mm. they made a couple of really good stops. Yeah, they did. And, and it's not like we broke down. It's like, you know what, hey, they're pretty good. And, and, yeah, and, and we, couldn't, uh, we couldn't capitalize. That's disappointing. As, as an offensive guy, you're, hey, we've, we've got them. So uh, let's, let's, let's get up 14 to nothing and, uh, and we're in business. But you know what? They're pretty good on defense. And they yeah. made a couple of pretty good plays. And I, you, you, a lot of times our breakdowns this year have come down to us not being real sharp. But we were pretty much sharp. They just, on two of those three plays, they hit us right in the mouth. And, and that's, you know, you got to tip your hat to them and, and hope you get back into that red zone. Yeah, they're on scholarship too. That's we right. Sometimes we get pretty right. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Ten nothing early on. They come back and they put together a really solid drive. They go seven plays and seventy some odd yards, and I thought they really had that really good balance on that option on, on their. I think it was their third offensive series when they drove down for a touchdown. When the option is running well, I know you, it, it's a nightmare to defend, but it can be fun to watch. And it looked like they had it going there for a little bit. Yeah, and and definitely when you can run the option and you can throw the ball. And that's what they were doing pretty successfully outside of the interceptions. They were throwing the ball well. Uh, he just made a couple of uh, bad decisions trying to put the ball over Mike Wallace's head and he couldn't do it. And, and we ended up picking the ball off. But if you can mix the option with the, with the little bit of the drop back pass and you're grooving, it makes it really tough. Yeah, and don't you feel like th that we may have caught a break and that we're getting them four games into the season rather than six or seven or eight, as some of our Lone Star Conference brethren will get them later in the year. It's a new coaching staff for them, too. They had run the spread in years past, going, you know, to the national semifinals last year. New coach, new offensive system. I think that team has a chance to get really good. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, th I think they'll win games, and, and they'll, they'll be a good team. They already are a good team, and they are, they're going to improve. They play against uh, Tarleton this yeah. weekend, and and that'll be a that'll be a fight there. But I tell you this, it just speaking to that a little bit, I I feel a little bit like, you know, they need to be thankful they played us somewhat early good, good in the point. season that, yeah. because we're we are not as I look offensively, 
we're going to get better. There's room for improvement, and it's not like we're tapped out because we're not functioning as well as we as as ultimately that we will. That second half told me that uh, that hey, this thing's going to get a lot better, and we just got to hold on, let our guys mature, let our new guys get in the groove, and 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 we'll get better. One of the things you did in the second half is you kept their offense off the field. They only got on the field once in the third quarter. They did score a touchdown on that drive, but you guys really possessed the ball. And and I believe you're three and zero this year when, when you have the advantage in time of possession. And, and that's not like some of the teams we've seen you orchestrate over the last few years, especially when you go back to some of those crazy video game type uh, oh, years yeah. we had when we'd that's score crazy. two or three plays. Yeah. This can help, though, especially if you've got a defense that's really worn out from a couple of long weeks the weeks before. That's right. And we, we knew this. At halftime, offensively, we don't need to try to go out and score a bunch of points. We don't need to try to go do anything as far as production. We just need to execute what, what we do. Just every player control what you can control and don't try to do it too, too much just to have the balance of passion, have the balance of discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just kind of, we were, we were able to run the ball somewhat effectively, not near as good as we want. Uh, but when you can move the chains and keep the ball, you gotta be running the ball. Uh, and I kind of tried to turn it into a run and play action game, a uh, little bit of quick game, getting the ball out of Mitchell's hands. Because uh, they were bringing, those guys brought blitzes from all, I thought yeah. one of them was coming out of the second row of the stands. I mean, it was crazy. They would double safety blitz, back them off, bring a corner. I mean, it, it was nuts. I mean, Mitchell had to really be sharp uh, in order to handle all that. And he was. He threw for better than 70% completion rate, 250-some-odd yards, and three more touchdowns. And let's not forget Sharkandrick West. Your team is 3-0 and when he plays, 0-2 and when he doesn't. He had two more touchdowns. He's played about six quarters of football, and he has four touchdowns this year. Nice win for your team. When we come back, we'll have a lot more as the Ken Collins Show continues right here on KTEC. Welcome back for more of the Ken Collins Show. While the football team is coming off a win, let's not forget the other Wildcat teams that are hard at work. The volleyball team being one of those hosted three Lone Star Conference teams last weekend. Matthew Sloan and Brooklyn Golly have more ACU sports with the JMC Network Sportscast. Thanks for joining us today on this JMC Network Sportscast. I'm Matthew Sloan. And I'm Brooklyn Golly. The ACU volleyball team continued to struggle on the road last weekend. The Cats started off their weekend with a 3-0 loss to Incarnate Word and followed that up with another 3-0 loss to Texas A&M Kingsville. ACU has been reeling in recent weeks and will have a chance to right the ship this weekend. Hoping a home court advantage will help this weekend, the Cats open their doors for the Moody Coliseum Whitman Classic. The ACU cross country team was in Stillwater, Oklahoma Saturday. The Wildcats ended up 15th overall with 402 points and the men placed 19th with 484 points. Junior Elise Goldsmith once again recorded her team's top time. Aisha Rumble, Maria Wetley Kyle, Emily Hill, Rachel Belcher and Kayla Calvert crossed the finish line following Goldsmith. The men's cross country team was led by freshman Xavier King, who was followed by his teammates James Grantham, Eric Forrester, Gary Duncan, Taylor Ox, and Bonjo Jessamy. The Wildcats are back to competing next week for the Midwestern State Invitational. The ACU soccer team dropped both of their matches last week to continue their free fall from the ranks of the Lone Star Conference. Despite a goal from Andrea Carpenter, ACU lost 2-1 against Texas Women's University last Friday before being blanked against Commerce in their next match. ACU will need to finish strong in order to qualify for postseason play. After taking on almost a dozen rounds of competition, Borja Cortez, Hans Hawk, Julia Monja, and Brittany Reed didn't leave anything on the table Monday night. The Wildcats tennis team came out on top as the ITA USTA South Central Region champions. Senior and four-time All-American Julia Monja and men's team leader Hans Hawk were announced the regional singles champions. Manja earned a second doubles title alongside Brittany Reed, sophomore and defending LSC Freshman of the Year. Hawk and Cortez grabbed the doubles victory in an exciting third set tiebreak. The four Wildcat athletes were awarded as a trip to the ITA USTA Small College Championships October 10 through 13th in Mobile, Alabama. Join us next time on the JMC Network Sportscast. I'm Brooklyn Golly. And I'm Matthew Sloan. See you next time. This year's football team welcomes a new cast of faces. Some of them playmakers on the field, but let's not forget those who work from the sideline for new special teams coordinator and linebackers coach Mark Roboto 
This Lone Star Conference matchup against the Greyhounds hits pretty close to home because for 15 seasons, Coach Roboto called Eastern New Mexico home. The former Greyhounds head coach is now watching Eastern film in a whole new light. Take a look. If we give Mitchell Gale a short field due to special teams, something good's going to happen. And if we give our defense a long field due to special teams, something good is going to happen. Our punt team is the regulators. Our punt return is called the playmakers. The kickoff team is the seals. Field goal team is called the big dippers. Kick return is the junkyard dogs, you know, because we want them to clamp on like a junkyard dog. You block like a junkyard dog bites. They never let go. Semper and Pettis. Semper and Pettis is what that is, and that means always attack. And that's, that's our motto here uh, at ACU Special Teams. We're always going to attack on specials. That's a dubious honor. I don't know how you got your hands on one of those. You only get one of those shirts if you're a special, special person. You know, you have to do something really big on special teams. Block a punt, run back a, run back a kick, uh, have a big hit. I've been coaching 28 years, and this is the most unique institution I've ever worked at. I love being at ACU. I love what we stand for. I love the way we treat our students. I love the way that we treat each other. You want to win off on the field, but you also want to win off the field. You, 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 you want them to develop into good men. Men that, that know how to be good husbands, how to be good employees, how to be good citizens, to foster manhood 101. Back on the Ken Collum Show, take a look at the standings in the Lone Star Conference through five weeks of the season. ACU and Eastern New Mexico, you'll see, tied for sixth place at one and two in the conference. West Texas A&M and Angelo State unbeaten in LSE play. Only one of them will still be that way after they play each other tonight in San Angelo. Take a look at the rest of the Lone Star Conference schedule today. Three games between LSC and the Gulf South, including Delta State, the team ACU beat last week. They're in Stephenville to play Tarleton State and a top 25 matchup, number 13 Midwestern State on the road at number 18 West Alabama. Back here, Coach, let's talk about ACU in Eastern New Mexico. Familiar foe, 35th time you've played them in a rivalry that goes back to 1950. But these aren't the same Greyhounds we've seen the last few years that would throw the ball 60, 70, 95 times a game as we saw back in 2009. They're back to running the triple option, which they did for years up until 2008. You played an option team last week at Delta State. How much does that help you to see it for a second game in a row? You know, even, even with the short week last week uh, going to Delta State, I thought our guys responded because it's, it's a little bit spooky when you, when you don't have time to prepare for, uh, for an option team. And it, sometimes it's rough. Our guys responded, and it's not the same type of option. This is old school Navy triple option that, that Eastern New Mexico runs. But I, f I feel like last week was a good segue into uh, what we're going to face this week because it is, it's going to test your passion and it's going to test your discipline. Your, your eyes have got to be exactly where they're supposed to be. And even though I'm not 100% sure that my guy doesn't have the ball, I've got to go with him anyway because he might. And because they're, they're pros at it. They're good. That's what they do. And uh, so our guys will be tested. And, uh, but I think, I think playing Delta State last week and making enough plays on defense to win that game, uh, I, I think we're set up pretty good. Well, I think it's often forgotten how much of a mental game football actually is, especially when you're playing an, an Eastern New Mexico team like this that runs a complex zone read offense that, that they do. You're going to have to have Angel Lopez. You're going to have to have LB Suggs kind of come up and be able to make tackles in the open field. How important is it for, for those guys to be able to, to have a great game, but also for the defense as a whole to sort of be able to anticipate what's going to happen? Yeah, the, the number one thing is our guys have to get lined up properly, and they've got to communicate, and they've got to be disciplined within what Coach Doolin and, and, and Coach Roboto and Coach Roush are, are, are teaching them. And uh, it does, it, because we talk about it all the time, there has to be a balance between passion and discipline. It can't be all passion mm -hmm. against, or it can't be too heavy passion against Eastern New Mexico, or I'm going to go try to hit their quarterback as hard as I can, but guess what? The fullback's running down the middle of the field with it. Mm -hmm. And so you ha there has to be a a good balance of passion and discipline. And it starts with our safeties. I'm glad you mentioned that. Those guys have got to be able to tackle, open field tackle, which is the hardest thing to do in football is tackle a, a good athlete in open field. So our guys will, will surely be tested because when you face people that know what they do in the option game, and that's their business, that's, that's the way they run their business, it, you, better, you better be right or it's going to be a long day. You mentioned Coach Roboto, Mark. Roboto, who for years was the head coach at Eastern New Mexico, 
How much has it helped this week and even last week preparing for the option, having not just a guy who has coached a triple option team, but specifically coached Eastern? Right, and he has, I mean, if anybody has a chance to stop the option, it should be Mark Roboto. At number one, he's a, he's a brilliant coach. He yeah. pushes the envelope and everything he does, great special teams guy. Uh, he does all our special teams. So we know right now we've got a chance to win because he's got the knowledge of the offense, knows how to stop it. Now, in particular to Eastern, we have not spoken a single time about, hey, this guy does this. You know, we, we don't talk much about personnel. We have because it's so much about the scheme and not the personnel because it doesn't matter who's got the ball. You better get him on the ground. You better be in the position to get him on the ground, and then you got to tackle him. Well, we talked a little bit about discipline, and that's, like you said, it's going to be a key factor in the game tonight. Um, let's talk a little bit more about how you're going to be sort of keeping your players focused on this game because it, it's easy to let a team that already has two conference losses sort of slip through your fingers, but how are you going to be able to prevent that? Well, if, if I start talking about a team that's lost games, all we've got to do is look in, look in the mirror and go, yeah. hey, we don't, we're not handling our business. Mm -hmm. And uh, the absolute worst thing you can do, I had somebody mention to me today uh, about, well, it's good to come home and to know you're going to get a win, and I almost looked at them crazy. And it's like, w what do you mean? We, we've, we've lost two games already that we didn't play well, so we didn't win. We didn't deserve to win those games. So it doesn't matter who we're playing. We, we've got to show up be prepared and play a clean game, just like we did in the second half of that Delta State game. That's why I'm really encouraged. I'm encouraged that we won the game, but I'm really encouraged that, you know what, as an offense, we went out and took a step that we haven't taken in, in, in a while. And it wasn't about, hey, we've got to score this amount or move the ball this amount. It was, it was the fact that, you know what, we kept the ball, and you don't, you don't keep the ball if you're blowing your foot off all the time. So you're getting first downs. We weren't ripping off chunks, but we were, we were efficient on offense, and that was good. So I think that'll carry over to this game, and I think offensively we're knocking on the door to becoming a real exciting offense again. You guys had another game last week where you didn't turn the ball over. Since you got to AC as the offensive coordinator and continuing this year as head coach, 24-0 and when you protect the football tonight. Obviously that becomes... Uh, another major focal point. Let me ask you about your, the health of your team because you, you, you're down another, incredibly, and not just another play, another linebacker. Justin Stevens for sure won't play tonight. How about overall the health of your team? Well, you know, at this point, you're halfway through the season. Every team in the country is beat up. You know, they're, they're, some, some of them are having to push through practice because they're, they're, they're hurt and they don't feel good. But some of our guys, you know, the guys that are not playing, they're, they have like pins in their knees and foot. I mean, they're not, they're not, they're, they're hurt. So with Justin Stevens, again, he's not going to play because he's hurt. He can't tough out a pulled hamstring. And how long we're going to miss him, I don't know. But, uh, you know, we're beat up. And uh, offensively, we're not. We're still searching for personnel the, the, to, to get the, the right fit in there to make, us, to make us be able to hit the accelerator. But, you know, everybody's beat up. But. We just, for some reason this year, we've lost a ton of guys at linebacker, and that's no fun because those are your tacklers. Most important thing tonight to beat Eastern New Mexico is what? Is to play a clean game, okay. to build on what we did last week offensively, uh, pr obviously protect the ball. That goes without saying. But if we execute and nobody has to uh, go freak show on anybody, it's just you, you make the routine plays within our offense, stay within what you do, control what you can control, and we should be fine. Defensively, we better be disciplined. We, we, we don't have a problem with the passion, but we better, we better be disciplined to, in order to get some stops. Well, Eastern's the type of team that you can sort of, um, you can't expect a whole lot out of them, but what you can expect is for them to um, sort of come out and be a little bit unusual. Are you expecting anything um, as far as special teams go for them to sort of take advantage? Because we've, we've struggled a little bit in, with our special teams in the past few weeks. Are you kind of waiting for them to come out and do something that's not really Orthodox? Well, offensively and de defensively, they're always a little bit different. They show you a lot of different looks, a lot of different blitzes, and you have to be sharp on your pass protection. So I don't, and they always have a little a new wrinkle every week. So we can expect something different, whether it's wholesale different. No, probably not. Offensively, they're going to do what they do because that's, they're trying to get good at it. They're trying to not only win this game, but they're trying to build and, and they're trying to get in a groove offensively. Uh, special teams, I can't answer that. You never know. And, and I'm just glad on, on, on my team and on my staff, I've got the guru of special teams, I feel like. So 
he is, uh, he's got all kinds of tricks up his sleeve, so he kind of knows, although we almost gave up a fake punt uh, last game. Yes. And, and so you never know. Special teams-wise, you either win that down or you lose that down. There are no ties in, in that down. So that's, uh, it'll, it'll be interesting special teams-wise. Well, hopefully, Coach and Taylor, we can all remember how to get to the stadium. It's been a month since we've played there. Should be a lot of fun tonight out at Shotwell Stadium. Parents weekend out there. ASU taking on Eastern New Mexico. Kickoff at 6 o'clock. Lance Fleming and I will have the pregame show on radio locally on Mix 92.5 FM and around the world on acusports.com. For Taylor Langston and for the coach Ken Collins, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Ken Collins Show. We'll see you at the game tonight, and we'll see you right here on the couch next week on the Ken Collins Show.